What's up, everybody? Got a great episode today about how to use the NHL playoffs as a tool to teach you some things about hockey. Now, this is not what you think it is. It's not going to be about the tactics or the talent or, you know, even watching the play where the puck isn't. We're talking more about the mental side of the game and reactions and how players hold themselves and a lot of lessons that you can learn as a parent, as a coach, as a kid from just watching professional level athletes portray themselves in a very high tense environment. So it's really good talk today. Uh, Mike really leads us in this conversation. Make sure you stay tuned. Also, if you haven't done so already, want to make sure we invite you to our Facebook group. It's a private group on Facebook, Our Kids Play Hockey. You have to answer a couple yes or no questions to dive in. Uh, but we do a lot here to get episode ideas. We have great discussions with people in the group. Uh, we also do a lot of polls about which directions we should go. So if you want to have a say in uh, where the show is going or even, even just comment on some of the things you've heard or seen, that's a great place to do it. Um, and as always, if you can give us those five-star reviews wherever you listen to our podcast, podcast, whether it be Apple, Spotify, Google, and anything and anything in between. Uh, we really appreciate this. And, and then finally, if you find value in this show, uh, which we really appreciate, please share it. Share it with the other parents, share it with your team, share it with your coaches. We really are on a mission to grow this community to uh, to the best it can be, to, to better the game of hockey for, for our kids, for you, and for the coaches out there, so forth and so on. But without further ado, let's dive into this episode about Washington NHL hockey, which has been an amazing time this playoff so far. Here we go. Hello, hockey friends and families around the world, and welcome to another edition of Our Kids Play Hockey. I'm Lee Elias, and I'm joined by my best friends on the planet, on the podcast plane, Mike Benelli and Christy Casciano Burns. And today we got a great topic today. It's how to watch the NHL playoffs. Now, we've done this kind of topic in the past before, but Mike brought a totally different perspective to us this morning. So this is kind of a part two, if you will. But with the NHL playoffs so far this year, it's 2023, by the, the way. It's the uh, eve of the final Game 7 between the Rangers and the Devils, just to give some context. But we've already seen a lot of different things happen in the playoffs this year, and we're going to continue to see them. So we wanted to get ahead of the gamut here and talk about this. And Mike, as I throw this to you, you made some incredibly profound points this morning when we were talking before the show about there are some lessons here that, we, that people may be missing. They go a little bit beyond, you know, tactics, talents, you know, and what you're just seeing on the television. So I want to throw it to you to kind of introduce it to the audience today. Yeah, I mean, we've talked about, thank you, but I, I think we've talked about a, a lot in the realm of, oh, wow, did you see that player and how they pivoted or how they protect the puck or how they play a defensive, you know, one-on-one -on -one or in different zone entries, things like that, which is really, you know, as a coach or a parent sitting with your kid, those are great. And, you, and, and, you're, and we're still doing those things. But I think one of the things that we can take from the NHL playoffs this time of year. And, and really when you're sitting with your kids, because you're probably really passionate about your team and you're like, like all I hear this time of year, right. Is we aren't doing this. And wow, we didn't do this. And the, the rest you know, screwed like, us. Well, you, you, you haven't played <laughs> on the team. You right. haven't blocked any shots. You're probably not playing with broken ribs. You're, 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 you're a fan, but what can we, but, but what I love is watching the adversity and the successes and the failures of pro athletes because you can easily equate it and remember your 12 year old and your eight year old and your 10 year old and how they're playing right when a like we're watching the nhl playoffs unfold right now in you know last second games getting tied up uh you know kind of what we would consider you know as coaches bonehead plays in the middle of a game and it, it leads to a goal against or you know somebody's not playing and adjusting uh to the other team and we're expecting these multi-million dollar players and coaches um, to do these things, right? But we also, uh, my feeling is I see that same expectation in every rink that I'm in every weekend at the at the volunteer youth level where nobody's getting paid. And I think it's a, it's a great way for us to have those conversations as parents with our kids uh, in our own living room uh, and equate it to what maybe we experienced throughout the season as well. Yeah, I agree. And also at the end of the game, you know, it can, no matter how heated, no matter how intense that game was, when it's over, it's over, right? I have seen games where they're really heated. I, I can recall the state championship title game where our girls lost. This was, I think, was their junior year. They won their sophomore year. And uh, at the end of the game, three of the girls would not shake hands mm. with the players, give them fist bump, or recognize the refs. And it was so distasteful. And my heart just broke. I'm thinking, what 
are you kidding me? So, and that would not happen on the professional level. You know, it's over, it's over, everyone shakes hands. So the, the good sportsmanship lesson is important too. No matter how ugly a game could get or how heated or how much you wanted to win, when it's over, you still have to, you know, be a good sport and acknowledge the winners. Well, well let's let, let's face it. Let's face it, though, in our world of hockey, that's what's so unique about our sport is is a sport that we're choosing, you know, choosing to kind of revolve our lives around is when you watch other sports, you do see that players walk off the court, turn their back. Mm -hmm. There's no handshakes at the end. You know, maybe in some professional sports, there's like a prayer group or something they get together and there's there's some kind of unity. But the NHL and the tradition of shaking hands at the end of, I mean, these guys are killing each other. Like yeah. they yeah. literally hate each other. Like five seconds before that, somebody was trying to put a stick through somebody's head and right. they're able to just say, okay, that was it. We battled, yeah. we hugged shook hands and we move on and that's a whole lesson in itself right because yeah. I don't, I, again not to bash the other sports but i don't see, you don't see that in right. sports. it's it's so uncommon to see right. you know teams get together and shake hands because i think most of us say oh there'll be a there'll just be a bench clearing brawl right but, you know, we did and, that that, and that's why it was so exciting to see it on you know the high school level when right. the game ended and kids who you know it's like that's not our sport that's not what we do in hockey. We acknowledge the winner. You fist bump at the end. You thank the refs. You right. thank the coach of the other team. You know, and it was just yeah. So that's that's one important lesson anyway that I can recall and relate to. So, I will say this: there is no greater tool or teacher for winning than losing, and I think that the NHL exhibits that better than anybody else. And in fact, if you look at NHL history, kind of keeping this on the note that we're talking about the NHL playoffs. Um, when you look at upsets and you look at uh, events that happen, there's usually a story behind it. Um, if I'm not mistaken, this is the first year in history um, that a an expansion team has defeated the previous cup champion. That's never happened before. Last year's President's Cup trophy, who were upset, the Florida Panthers upset this year's President's Cup trophy. Story there, by the way, Bruins fans. I know you're hurting today, but the last time your team lost like this, you ended up winning the cup the following year. Yeah, right. Right. <laughs> right? I, I, I trust me. I remember that one. I think right? Tampa too. I think Tampa. Right. Tampa. Tampa oh. was 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 devastated after their president's trophy year. They were embarrassed. I think by Columbus. Right. Right. And then they end up winning two cups in a row. So the NHL exhibits this, I think, better than any other any other league. All right. Um, from a parity standpoint, um, and I've always brought that to my teams. Of <clears throat> you know, you can choose to to look at a loss however you want, but if you're not learning, that's the real loss. All right. And and again, look, I wrote down some some notes here just from this playoffs alone. And look, maybe we'll even revisit this in a few more weeks if there's more. But Mike, you brought up a great one earlier in the uh, in the Kings and Oilers series. You want to talk about resolve. All right. The the Oilers goalie stick breaks. <laughs> right. With with seconds, you know, the minutes on the clock and, and he turns it over and they, the Kings tied it up. Right. I'm not mistaken on that. Right. Yeah. They um, tie, I mean, here, here tied in, in the a, game. In a game in a crazy elimination game. game to win. Right. It's an elimination game. So I, I, I want everybody to take a minute to come back to the scenario here. Let's let's ask great questions. The great questions lead to great answers, right? One is, okay, you might look at an NHL game and say, well, that's unfortunate that his stick broke and the, and the Kings took advantage, right? Now equate that to a 12U level. What happens at the 12U oh. level? All right. Well, the goalie stick breaks. Parents, you probably go, that's unfortunate. No one's going to blame the goalie if their stick breaks. But what happens on that team's bench now? Right. Because if they're not emotionally secure, that team's going to lower its head and it's like, oh, man, now we can't win. Now it's tied. Now they're coming. Let's let's rewind back a minute. Who won that game? The Edmonton yeah. Oilers. They 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 rose up completely against that adversity and won the game. Now, there's going to be people that say, well, they've got McDavid. They've got Dryzo. That's not the point. The point is it didn't phase them one bit. They saw the adversity and they. They, they took it on and they won the game, right? That is a professional athlete. That is the side that you can't see on the ice. The talent right. of McDavid and Dreisel, you can see it. You can see it all any day of the week. But you can't see what happens in their mind when something which was insanely unfortunate happens. Yeah. 
and they just go, nope, we're going to win the game. Yeah. All right. That's one example of that. And there's other ones. I, I, we can talk about this. Because there's a lot, I mean, you, y'all, you both can recall times when there's the unpredictable happens to you. You never saw that coming. It happens. Right. And how did your team respond to it? And did they just throw in the towel and say, okay, that's it. We're done. Or did they say, okay, let's figure out how we're going to fix this or how we can overcome that obstacle. Well, so you, every, there's tons of examples. It's every fan. It's every fan on Facebook. It's every, like when the Bruins go down to nothing, people are throwing their TVs yeah, out the window. Yeah, like, yeah. oh, this is it. It's over. It's we're yeah. done. And then they tie it up and they're like, Oh my God, this is the dynasty. We, we thought we were going to have Here, here's the, this is <laughs> the, the mind team of we the are. Fan. And, then, and then they tie yeah. it up. Oh my God. It's doors. But that's happens that we see that all the time on youth. Oh, yeah. And in, in parents in the stands, right. The ebbs and flows. I mean, one of the, le- I mean, one of the main lessons that I love to, you know, just show, you know, my kids and kids that I work with, when you look at the NHL game is the fact that when you, when those players come out after uh, afterwards and they come into an interview in the second period or first period, it's all about, well, we can't get too high. We can't get too low. We have, you know, this is the game. It's a long game. If games were decided in the first, if games are decided the regular season, the Florida Panthers wouldn't play the Boston Bruins because they right. would just say, Hey, Boston Bruins, you win the Stanley cup. Here you go. Nice job. But the game, the game in itself is played every period, every shift ebbs and flows. There's going to be great times. There's going to be weak times. But what the thing is we have to do is we got to, you know, like the, the, my, my, my guys at the sharks like to like to talk about, like, you know, we win and we learn, right. But right. we never right. lose. And, and I think now, and, and Lee alluded to it, the Bruins will learn from this. They'll leave and 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 there'll be a fire. There'll be a desire. There'll be something like you look at you listen to uh the stories about the Colorado Avalanche and McKinnon and those guys and and how like they were right. like I can't, like uh, the fire in their belly to right. win the next year after they lost. Well, and I want to I want to note I want to note people forget this. They were the worst team in the league like by a lot 5 years ago. I mean, it was they, they were they were horrible. And you know who was on that team? McKinnon. <laughs> All right. right. Uh, Johnson was on that. I mean, th- th- these guys were there. And they they referenced that last year after they won the cup. I, th- I think that's one of the first things they said was like, look where we got. Like, we were the worst team in the league. You brought up the Boston series. You go to any fan of the Boston Bruins last night with one minute, one second left in the third. And it's over. We were going to the next round, right? We're all standing uh, up. Right? right. I'm not making fun of Bruins fans. This is the lesson. The Panthers were not done. All right. I'm not saying the Bruins were done. I'm saying the Panthers fought. They, 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 I cannot imagine the level of pressure on these players in a game seven against the greatest regular season team of all time with just the moniker of why not us. And they tied it up and they won the game. There's a lesson there. Granted, if you're a fan of either team, it's either a joyous lesson or a painful lesson, but there's a lesson there. That team didn't stop. They were not beaten. Right. I wish as a coach, we would talk about that level of adversity more. Right. right? And I, I, we could talk about how here's a great exercise. I do this with teams all the time. Mike, this is to your point, Krista, you'll love this too. All right. Pick any random moment in the, in that game, Boston Bruins, Florida game seven of a shot of the bench, especially the Bruins. You will not know what the score is to the game, mm-hmm. whether they're losing two nothing or up three to two. I mean, you'll know after the overtime loss, but any other point during gameplay, you will not know what the score is just by looking at their bench because they're so even keeled. Uh, another great example from another sport, talk about a positive Boston moment, when uh, the Patriots beat Atlanta in the Super Bowl. All right? Uh, Atlanta was killing them, killing them. And I did this exercise. I show snippets of the game. You cannot tell at any point in the game that the Patriots were losing the game just by looking That's at their cool. face. Yeah. Right. They were just yeah. stoned the whole game. The only time you knew the only time they smiled was when they won the game. Right. Right. So that's, that's the professional athlete. That's the professional level of mental fortitude and mental toughness. We need to apply this more at the youth level. Right. right. Also, no, we need to, we, sorry, <laughs> if you look at some youth level benches, you know exactly who's winning and who's losing. <laughs> Every time. Well, there's, there's no, there's, I, I shouldn't say no. There's very little effort to yeah. control that. Right. And, yeah. and, and I'm, I'm saying you can start to teach these things as young yeah. as six. Right. Not right? too high, not too low. Right. They can, I, it's easy to grasp. 
Yeah, and yeah. here's the other thing, Christy, to be fair, I don't expect an eight-year-old to grasp it like Patrice Bergeron. Right. Okay. But you can see them start to understand. Oh, like slowly, sure. it takes years to master this. That's why yeah. they're professional athletes. Right. But you, but you, you can introduce it. those concepts early. Right. At a young age. How, how about this one? How about this one, Christy? Your worth is not based on wins and losses. Yeah, that's an to, important one. To a kid, right? Now, well, for coaches, no, it's, for it's coaches so in the NHL, it is. <laughs> it's so funny to say that. Like, we, I, I, I remember when I was, uh, you know, an, an up-and-coming coach, thinking I was a coach, and and not having kids. And, you know, we had lost, like, I don't know, it was probably like a 10U game or, I don't know, it was some stupid you know, to, ornament sorry. And, i like and, watching and, mike reminisce on the air and we, yeah, and we won so we went we're in the we're in the we're in the we're in the finals and we don't and we and we and we lose against a team we we you know shouldn't have lost to blah 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 the kids really you know the kids the kids were kids they actually were like oh my god these, these are kids these are kids and i was and i i'm like well you don't you don't want those those medals don't even take them out of the locker room they're not even they're worth nothing you said but to those kids they were, oh yeah yeah like oh, they're not wow. worth it because yeah. I because I I mean we're in the middle of the season and we're like I'm like guys right. that was a that was an embarrassing loss you know you guys just didn't put the effort in and I, and I'm thinking and even when I left the locker I'm like oh, God like that was stupid like I, I like just like to, to those kids that meant a lot like right. being like, they didn't realize that being in second place was not sixth place and like it was like you know they they won something it was funny my right. my, yeah. my 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 son just brought up my little guy it was it was funny listen we were watching the the uh the iihf championship and he's like oh i think the it was like u.s and Sw uh, sweden in the finals and canada mm -hmm. and slovakia in the in the bronze medal and he's like i think I, I think the the bronze medal game is the more important game because you get to win your last game right like the loot like you feel better Winning yeah. the bronze, I go. You don't feel better being silver medalist, no, because you lose the you silver, lose you lose silver. the gold, you yeah. win the bronze. You and always I, lose I, for silver. But and but when you're eight or nine or ten years old, every time you get on the ice, you you're winning or you're winning. Like you got you, and I think you know. I know I didn't have that perspective for a long time, and I think you know all of us as youth hockey coaches and parents have to have the perspective that that doesn't make a kid tougher or build grit. Or right. what, what, I, what actually, you know, in hindsight, what Bill's grit is, my God, you guys put the effort in and you know what, a little bit more of this and a little bit more of that, right. where we can build on this. What an accomplishment, but we can go further and not right. you failed, but we didn't accomplish the goals and you could do this to reach those goals. And that, and that's a, a level of, you know, the kids are really honestly, and we talk about this all the time on the show, honestly, didn't even care. They just cared where, where the snack bar was. So, you know, to <laughs> me, it was, it was, it was more, it was more. Like uh, as an affront to me, like I failed. So you guys shouldn't enjoy this. Right. Whereas they loved it. They weren't happy and they shouldn't be. But they're, they're, they're but they should rejoice in the fact that they were where they were. Mike, I, I want to uh, thank you for, and I appreciate this. You made yourself vulnerable there. And I don't think enough people do that. I think it's a big deal that you actually said that story the way you did. And that, you know, mm -hmm. I made a mistake. All yeah, right. you screwed uh, up. Right. And I, I, I just want you to know, oh, yeah. I really appreciate your willingness to do that um, because I don't think we do that enough as a society. Um, no, but that's the thing. Like, like, look, equating it back to the metaphor here, that was a L for you that you learned from, right? You're a better coach because of that moment, right? You're, you're looking at it eloquently now. Of like, well, I learned something there. Actually, those kids taught you something from what you're saying. Well, just because because I think when they came in the locker room, it was like, oh, they're they're pretty like they're dejected, right? But they were kind of looking at their medals, like, well, that's cool, yeah. right? right. Stuff. That ain't yeah. cool. Don't even don't yeah. even don't even take well, those things out. Like that's not cool. Uh, cool is winning, not losing. Yeah, well, I wrote this good. down. Yeah, I wrote this down. Look, there's a serenity in silver. All right, um, and and what I mean by that is this: like you do, you always lose for silver in hockey, or at least in team sports. But you also got to take a moment back, moment, and depending on the level of competition, especially if it's like an Olympic or world level, like you're the second best in the world, yeah. you can do the second best as first loser all you want. I mean, there's something to be said that that in the world, you know, you're second or third in the world. Now, look, when we're talking about uh, might tournaments, this uh, the severity is not there, okay? But that doesn't mean that the situation. Maybe you are a team that wasn't expected to be there, and. You know, there's a way to appreciate that. Now, I do I do want to say this point too, Mike, that um, something I've adopted for myself, and I've actually tried to adopt this for my son, um, because in, in youth hockey, you get a lot of medals, you get a lot of things thrown at you. Um, and what I've started doing is 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 printing out 
photos of great moments from the season. Cause I want wow. those to be his, his, his trophies. Right. And this is something I do in my office. I've been very blessed with winning in my life, but there's really no trophies in my office. There, there's pictures of the teams in that moment. Cause that's what I want to remember. Right. And it represents something larger than a piece of metal or, or steel to me. Right. Which will fade over time. Right. The picture doesn't fade. So I, I, I want, you know, my son and my daughter to be able to look at the photograph and say, wow, I remember that moment because we overcame this great adversity together in this moment. It's not represented just by the, you know, the gold plate on my wall, right? Which, which are great. I'm not knocking trophies, everybody. I don't want anybody to think that. I'm just saying that there's more there. And when you think about the Stanley Cup, trying to bring this back to the NHL playoffs, right? The cup's the cup, right? It's legendary, right? But uh, the moment your team wins, which I have not experienced yet, Hopefully one day I will. That's the special moment, right? Go ahead, Mike. No, I, it's almost I like, like the photo. Idea, but the, the photo, snapshot. the photo. Yeah. Thank you, Chris. Yeah, but that, and that's yeah. but that's the snapshot of your of like that's something that's tangible that you can remember and you can say. Right. Hey, listen, it's the reason I. I mean, it, 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 it's 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 one of the only reasons I like social media. I mean, I love watching like the Facebook memories come back. And it pops up and like, oh, four years ago today, yeah, especially yeah. this time of year, right? Like you were in like, and you see, and it's funny, something came up uh, a little while ago. I just probably should have saved it, but it was a picture of the kids in the locker room, all, you know, red eyes, bad, you know, the, the after you could clearly see they were all crying, but they were happy. Like right. they had just finished the game. They lost. They're a close group. They're crying, but in the photo, they can remember, oh, I remember that. Oh, oh remember that, right. how we got there? Right. And, right. oh, my God, this kid, he – I can't believe how great this kid played in that game. Well, like, look. You, you know, so I'll it's say, all those kind of things where it's not just a, a picture of a kid holding the trophy up. It's right. the pictures of the kids embracing each other and and being happy for each other even in loss. So you saw that last night. There was a picture of uh, in, in, I think it's Ber Bergeron it's and Marshawn. Yeah, it is. And they're hugging they're crying. like brothers yeah. forever. Like and yeah. and that's the and they and to me, we don't I don't think we see that instilled enough in youth sports even for our own athletes. And I think it's because of the transient nature. Well, if anything we see it as weakness. Sports. And and that's a problem right. too. Right. We right. see it as like, look how right. soft they are right now. Like, no, that that's, that's people who have gone to war together. The other thing I'll say too, Mike, is this, is that, and, and this is like a challenge for parents, right? Uh, if you played sports as a kid, go find an old trophy and see what you can remember about it. You might remember a few things, right? But my, my guess is if it was 20, 30 years ago, you'd be like, I, I kind of remember winning this. But then if you can go find an old photograph of your team, even if it's just the team photo, you'll be yeah. flooded with memories. Like, what was that kid's name? Oh, I remember this person. I hated that kid. You know, things like that. All right. Yeah. Looking aside, trophies are nice. I'm not knocking trophies. All right. But but they're just objects, right? It's the memories and what you learn that matter. And like you said, the Bruins last night, Patrice Bergeron, I wrote this note down too. The amount of injury, he played through that whole series with a herniated disc, which believe it or not, is not the worst thing he's played through. You know, the the, the perseverance of this guy to play through all that injury, which is, which is really a hockey thing too. Like you said, the handshake, um, you know, we, we play through uh, lots of pain. I'll just, just everybody listening. If you are injured, you should not play through that. You should get help. You should seek help and medically get yourself, whether it's mentally or physically. All right. But if you're hurt, not injured, we play through that in this sport, right? That's a tremendous lesson. And that's helped me a lot, a lot in my life. Um, but yeah, there, there, go ahead. I apologize. No, no, hurt, yeah, hurt and hurt and injured. There's no doubt about it. I mean, I'm I'm yeah. a big believer that okay, are you hurt? Like, are you just laying there? Like, you want somebody to come up and hug you? Are you hurt? Or are you injured? Right. Like, are you really hurt? You know. So let's not let's get back <laughs> and play, play. But I think, but I, and I think, and again, the, the NHL is extreme, right? They're doing things to people that you know no child should ever have to experience. So right. I, 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 you know, listen. The bottom line is your 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 career no no your career is on the line if you can't if you break your finger. And and it's a, and you can't put your hand in your glove. Then maybe you know. But, well, that's injured. You don't play, you're don't, injured. Yeah, don't play. <laughs> don't, don't play in that that, yeah. that that third game of the year. Well, look, we, think, we, you know, we had Bryce Salvador once uh, a couple right. of years ago, and I'll tell you what. He, 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 one of the things he did say was that uh, just to quote him, he said, "You know, in the NHL, we have we have doctors there, we have medical staff there, we have an ambulance there all the time. You know, it's part of the job. He goes, there is no other level like that." So, you know, to your point, Mike, you know, if, if someone is severely hurt at a game, there are people there that can take care of that. That's part of their day to day. 
But yeah. in youth hockey, it is not. Yeah, but I think I have a I think... story about a trophy. It just so, so a couple of weeks ago, Sophie and I went back to her rink when she played as um, let's see, she was a Mike. Yeah, it's okay to use that term, right? Eight you. Let's say eight you. I don't know. They, so might, come, they might come after us, Christy, if we keep using it. They might. The <laughs> USA Hockey Patrol might find us. We'll get mad. <laughs> <laughs> the hockey police are going to come after. <laughs> <laughs> So um, they had renovated the rink and they had changed the trophy cases. And she was, oh my gosh, oh no. Just because they worked so hard to win the Pepsi tournament. And the trophy is a Pepsi, like a can man, a can of Pepsi. Yeah, it's yeah, like yeah. A, a man and he's holding a stick. So it's like the can man, right? And right. it's pretty sizable one. She goes, I wonder if they threw my trophy away. So we're walking by and we're, we're looking and we're looking, we're looking. And all of a sudden she finds it. She's like, oh my gosh, they didn't throw it away. She was so excited. So, you know, I know that you think there isn't a lot attached to trophies, but I have seen it in my kids when they work really hard and it, they win a trophy and it's in the case. Right, it's right, right. Ring. It's a big deal. Yeah, I, <laughs> so I, I'm it, not, I'm not saying, flashback for her. Yeah. I'm not saying they're worthless. <laughs> Yeah, I'm just no, saying. No, that, no. That, yeah, yeah, yeah. In fact, they, look, it's, they it's do funny. Their moments for the kids. Well, too, Christy, yeah. it's funny. I, I remember this at the rink I used to play at. Um, they put our championship banners up every year, and I had a yeah. few in there. And I went back to this rink right. not too long ago, and there was no, not one banner from the '90s, not one. They were all gone. Oh. Oh. <laughs> you know what I mean? Oh. Like, like, yeah. uh, and that's so, heartbreaking because that's. That's a sense of pride, you know. Well, that it, that was my team. It's we a sense of evolution, right? Special, like, yeah. Like, you, you know, there's probably not many people from my era coming back to look at those. But there, you know, there was like the oldest one I think I saw was yeah. like 2011, 2012. Oh. So there's a whole another decade missing too, right? Yeah, from from there, I didn't like play. I, I think thoughts. it should be a rule for the rinks: never get rid of those <laughs> right. trophies or banners because when when the kids come back. They, they need Look, to see the, those the, remember the, that. Yeah. The point I was making was was outside the Stanley Cup. The trophies do fade over time or they disappear yeah. over time. The memories don't, though. Like, they, yeah. they stay with you. Um, so yeah, getting but, back but, to the, the NHL, though, here. I think I'd like to segue to, like, okay, those trophies need to be worth something. Those memories are worth something. But now you see – the team. Okay, so I look at like I look at this as a long. This is a marathon. The Stanley Cup playoffs, right? Just like our mm -hmm. hockey seasons, and to watch the the jubilation and the and and the the over the top fandom yeah. of a team winning in the first round, and then you see all the you see all the. <laughs> Who are you talking and, about, Mike? Is there a specific and, and, team you're thinking of right I'm just, now? <laughs> I, listen, I'm just I'm just like I'm just like okay, you won the first round. Like it's not it's not like the I, I, if you if that's what you equate to the end goal. Like and and we see it in teams all the time, right? They they win this great emotional game on Saturday afternoon in a tournament, and then they lay a goose egg the next day or that night because all of their emotion and all their energy and all of their passion went into the rival game, and they forgot about the other team. And I, you know, we and I think we see it especially at the youth hockey level because we're running into the same teams over and over and over again. They say, "Oh, we finally, we finally, you know, got the monkey off our back and beat." beat that team and then you then you go and lose to a team that shouldn't you shouldn't even be playing right and i think right. that's you know and i think that's a great example too is of that high and low like where are we in the highs and lows of of even in it not only in the game itself but now in in the series of all right we won that was great right it, you know you enjoy the moment but then it, it, you you gotta you gotta Turn well, it off. Let's talk prepare. about that. Let, let's talk about the Toronto Maple Leafs real quick. Uh, again, we're recording. Oh, I wasn't referring from, to them particularly, was, but yeah. <laughs> well, I'm going to talk about that. So, so, so <laughs> it, it just, just, just for uh, uh, context, here, it's May 1st, 2023, when we're recording this. So the second round has not begun yet. But here's the thing: um, when you look at the and follow me, everybody. When you look at the fan base of Toronto right now, it looks like they won the Stanley Cup when they got out of the first round. And I do understand that after 19 years of not getting out of the first round, I do understand the elation. The challenge is now on the actual team to not make that their Stanley Cup. All right. Yeah. And, and here's the thing. Now there's a new challenge here. There was a, there was a, there was a definitely a pressure of getting out of the first round. Again, we're talking about what you can learn from this. If I'm, if I'm part of the Maple Leafs organization right now, I'm happy, but that's not our goal. Our goal is not to get out of the first round. Goal is to win the Stanley Cup. 
So you cannot enter the second round with that having been your Stanley Cup. And I have seen this, Mike, at the youth level over and over again, where a team gets a huge upset or they get a big win or they they get past the first team that they were supposed to get past. And that was it for them. That was what they needed to do. And they're done. Right. Because they're not mentally. You said the ebbs and flows. We're talking. We were talking about some of the negative ebbs. You know, the losing ebbs are getting scored on. There's the uh, there's the other range of this. Of you can get way too high, right, and get get full of yourself, and and you can completely get complacent and lose a game, right. So that's yeah. <laughs> it's going to be on the Maple Leafs now. Now, what's interesting about the Maple Leafs now is now they're going to play the Panthers, another team on a similar wavelength, right? Who have just done something to thought to be somewhat impossible, right? So uh, or improbable. So now you have two teams with kind of a similar aura <laughs> facing off against each other. And I'll tell you right now, if one of those teams is not focused, that that series could become a sweep very quickly, right? Now, I'm hoping it doesn't happen. I'm hoping it goes seven games again. It's just great hockey. That's what you want. But, but we can learn from these events. If I'm, if I'm a Maple Leafs fan, I might be excited right now, but I don't want the team to be excited. I don't want them to be satisfied, right? These are things you can teach youth players. Now, now uh, did you want to talk about that one for a minute, Mike? Because I, I, I have to talk about the Jets at some point, too, because I was actually a little intrigued by that that series. Yeah, no, I mean, well, it's it's just the, it's it's the same adage I see it in my kids all the time. Like, you know, the team will go up to nothing. Like, that's this is unbelievable. We, did it. we got it. Yeah. Texting their friends, you're done. Yeah. Oh, look, and then all of a sudden, like, they're crying in the third period because like, they just <laughs> lost the game. So I think it's just you know, it's just a matter of you know, just just understanding that that's why that, you know, I hate to be cliche, but that's why we play. We play right. so that that over the course of a game, I can have a unbelievable i could score I'll give a, 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 one example for me right and this wasn't that this was pretty recent that we had we always split our goalies at the youth level and we we, we it was the other goalies turn they're up and i'm like okay well you're gonna start this playoff game and literally like 11 minutes in we're down six nothing the bench is fighting kids are screaming at each other that kid sucks i can't believe it we and and, and, and now i was pretty you know and i I, I think I'd conditioned the other coaches to be pretty much like me. I was like, okay, guys, it's, you know, we're like, well, we got to pull him. We got to pull him. We got to pull him. I go, well, we're not going to pull him. He gets half the game. So let's just, let's just, let's just even this out. Let's get through it. And we get through it. Right. And the other goalie goes in and all of a sudden the kids are like, you know, cause in their perception, it's the better goalie. Right. Almost like, you know, another, you see this in the NHL a lot. And now all of a sudden we score a goal. Oh, that's pretty good. And then we get a stop and then we score another goal. Then we get a stop. Then we get another stop. Then we get to score another goal. And now it's, now it's six, six, you know, and then, and then all the momentum's going our way. The kids are happy. You would have, you wouldn't even remembered the first half of the game because, because the kids were able to persevere throughout and win a game and have that, have that, that feeling of that momentum building. But I think it's, I, I know it's a lot of it's because during the game, a number, the leaders of the team, I mean, these are young kids, you're 12 year olds, right? The leaders of the team never got on each other. They're almost like, well, come on, come on, come on. We, we, right. we're, we they, they were conditioned at that point in the season to support each other. And I think we've seen it over and over and over again. We talked about, you know, goalie sticks being broken, guys missing. I mean, in these series alone, the last three days, how, how many, how many game winning goal breakaway opportunities were there in all these games that they right. could have ended the game and, and they didn't score? And not just because the goalies are great, but you know, the, the players didn't score. So you could just say the same thing. Like, okay, yeah, he made a, def- a, a bad defensive play here, but what about you? You had a breakaway and you couldn't put the right. puck in the net. So, but but they didn't just like, okay, they didn't not score the breakaway and then go to the bench and quit. And say, oh, I quit. <laughs> I yeah. didn't score. It's my fault. But I think that's, and that's what's great about watching all these teams, you know, even even the Dallas series and, and and you know, the the Carolina series. with the you know, When you watch these people up front, and and you get to watch them do the series of game after game after game. And I, I think that's why I love these seven game series, because you get to see, I don't know, you just get to really see personalities of coaches and teams and players. And it, and it makes you think about, wow, how, what, what are those aspects that I love about those players mm-hmm. that I can, that I can talk to my kids about. Right. Important that the kids get it. And also the other relevant piece here that the NHL doesn't have to deal with parents all right so we're we're saying oh this is great for the kids to learn and when you were patient with that goalie i bet you i bet any money there are parents in the stand chirping saying pull the goalie but oh no they're like benelli's an idiot what's what's wrong with him why do we have like why is he coaching this way like what's like like uh, i mean uh, why did dads leave the building like leave the building 
and, and go yeah. outside. Like I can't watch this. And then they and then they find out. It's like the people that leave. Like, it's like like you leave a game and all of a sudden the team comes back and they don't let you back in. You're banging on the like I want to come back in. I, you know, yeah. Lee, talk, Lee talked about the Patriots. Like how many people yeah. had left the stadium? Right. right. Like that, and then you're like, oh no, no, I, I'm I was there. I want to be back. No, no, no. <laughs> you jumped off the bandwagon a long time ago. Yeah. You're out. Right. So let's not forget that two parents no. who are you are listening right now. This is all your, great. This is great for the kids. Your, to your body language and your facial expressions and your yeah. like 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 stuff in the right. stands is is so more impactful. Because the bottom line is the NHL players really. I mean, I know there's ebbs and flows with fans in the stands, but they they don't care what right. mom or dad are yelling shoot yeah. it stands they don't like the nhl they just look like, like what was people yelling my name i don't even I, right. I, i'm i'm at a level right now where that that does i can't even i wash all that out they not the, the, the out. strong the, the strong mental players and to lee's point right. earlier these are paid professional right. people that have learned that an eight-year-old doesn't know how to block no. out the screaming no. and yelling from a parent so it's our and job. Eight, to eight year olds going to hear it when they're in the car with the parent and no at doubt. home as well. It's going to carry out. And I love the games where the parents, I can't watch this and they leave, right? <laughs> and then they come back like, oh my gosh, what happened? We, yeah. yeah, we are a comeback team. You gave up too early. Right. And then they're shocked to see the turnaround because right. they were so disgusted with the coaching and they had to leave. I think yeah, it's also exactly. important that we talk about the kind of psychology of a child versus an adult, whereas an adult, you know, your parents are not perfect. Um, but uh, obviously, circumstances can play into this. But when you're eight, you don't know that yet. You don't no. realize that your parents are gods, for lack of a better, right. better, yeah, no, you know, yeah. right. So so parents, when you walk out of a game of a, even a 12 year old, I, I mean, I, I understand the thought process behind it. I don't agree with it, but I understand it. Your kid's not going to understand it. You gave up on him or her from their right. point of view. All right. So it's devastating to them. Right. And it's funny because I, I know people, I'll just call them old school people who'd say, yeah, that hardened me up as a kid. Yeah, and they, got, they have deep psychological issues as adults. Right. And it's, it's, I just think support's a better option. That's my opinion. Another one I want to talk about, guys, is the uh, Winnipeg Jets lost to the, um, Vegas Golden Knights, which was somewhat predicted. Um, but there was a little bit of um, hoopla after the game. So the head coach of the Jets, Rick Bonus, uh, heavily criticized this team after the loss. This is a learning moment for me as a coach, um, I, I thought. And I thought he was harsh. He said basically his team had no pushback, that they were weak, really criticized his players. And then uh, Blake Wheeler, a veteran player, came out after, and they asked him about it. And I give Blake Wheeler a lot of credit for standing up for his teammates. He said, um, I did not agree with that assessment. And then this is the key. I'm actually going to read this. He said, we could have had those discussions behind closed doors. I didn't agree with how he handled himself after. And it became an issue of trust. All right. Um, and then uh, Connor Hellebuck, the goalie, came out and said, I agree with Wheeler. Now, now you're starting to understand why this team might not have won. All right. Now, to, to, to give Rick Bonus some credit, he did say in the day after, uh, I criticized myself for the choice of words. All right. So he did, he did kind of... Uh, uh, you know, man up to it. Okay. But there's no trust in that locker room right now. All right. And if it wasn't there, then it probably wasn't there during the series. Right. So I am a believer. If you're going to call your team out in the media, <laughs> do that in December. <laughs> you don't do it after well, a loss in the playoffs. I think that's well, look at, look at, yeah. it's too late then. Right. Look at, look yeah. at uh, Keith Kachuk. You could say, you could, you could, you could go right back to him calling the Florida Panther locker room soft. Right. This is a dad. Like yeah. you talk about a hockey dad, yeah, he's a, parent, he's a like, hockey dad. Yeah. He's a yeah. hockey dad of a kid on the team, right? Just think about it. He's like, and he's up there in the bar, you know, just like you would at a tournament. Right. Wow. Of course, these guys aren't winning. This locker room's soft. Right. Like they uh, can't play. And then the kids, and then the kids, I call them kids. These men are in the locker room going, who the who the yeah. hell is he? <laughs> By the <laughs> way, Keith Kachuk was a pretty prolific player in his day. Yeah. Now Keith Kachuk. Yeah. I mean, yeah. Uh, yeah. And Keith Kachuk is, you know, he's he's not a hockey dad, right? He's right. But he's a hockey dad. He's just a dad. He's an all star. He's, frustrated. he's like he's like my kid deserves better than this, you know. But he oh. he's out there working his butt off. But 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 to your point, Lee, that was done timely, and I'm sure Keith Kachuk, as 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 much as he shoots his mouth off. Was was he knows he knows that, exactly like, what he's doing. <laughs> he knows he's a professional. Huh? Right. He knows where that was going to push the buttons. And guess whose mouth it didn't have to come out of? <clears throat> the head coach's mouth. Right. Like yeah. the head coach could say, 
don't know. Maybe uh, I don't know. Keep them play maybe for a long time, like, guys. But but when you <laughs> but you say it after the fact, like oh these guys they didn't play for me and they stink. But but you're saying it. It's it's almost it's 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 now you know take a little bit of responsibility for yourself there, and and again to to the players' point, bring, keep it in the locker room. If it leaks out or whatever, it's a different story than calling them out after it's over. There's no yeah. motivation. Like you think that's going to motivate those guys throughout the summer to say I'm going to show him and come back in September? I mean, I don't know. It's you hard, lost them. You, do, you lost those guys. You do it in the right when you do it in the right time. Right. Then it does. It, it, it and and I think I mean I think it was brilliant, honestly, with Kachuk. I think it it was there was a there was a distinct point in time when you look at the players and what they ended up doing after that little call out. Right. And we see that all the time in our own lives with our kids. Like, and I don't mean calling them out, but saying, okay, wow, that was a tough, that was a tough weekend, guys. What can we do now not to feel that way again? Or what right. can we do now to change the trajectory of the way we were playing? And I think that's where these teaching moments come in to, to, if you're a fan of, if you're a South Florida hockey fan and you can say, wow, remember when the Panthers were completely out of the playoffs and now, and then they were a wild card team and now they just beat the best team in the league. Like how did that happen? It happened right. because they built belief and trust and, and they had a shock. I mean, the kid was, well, I mean, look, and they were the president trophy winner last year. We like, we can't, well, they're not a bad team. They just had yeah, a bad, like, like, but, but like, like I'm saying they got embarrassed last year. Like, what do you think they learned no from that? Tampa, you brought Tampa. Tampa was the president's cup trophy winner when they got eliminated in the first round. What do you think they learned from that, especially playing against another President's Trophy team mentally? The other thing too, Mike, is that, um, you know, there's a lot of different ways to motivate a team. And I, like, look, I, I think there's three at the end of the day. If you really want to simplify this, <clears throat> there's the power of positive motivation. You're playing great. You're doing great. Keep going. I think there's a power in being honest, which is not always what you want to hear, but what you need to do. Hey, you're not playing great. You yeah. need to do better. All right. A lot of people think that's power of negative motivation. No, it's not. Not to me. That's honesty. Then there's the power of negative motivation, which I personally do not agree with, which is where you may even lie to a player to get a result. Okay. I don't subscribe to that. There are plenty of coaches that do. All yeah. right. You know, um, and different depending on your era, right? Uh, you you might have got a lot more of that. Um, th now, with that said, I don't criticize. All right. Like that's that's my approach. You, you gotta you gotta coach how you coach. All right. Well, you have to coach how you know your team. Like, right. like if you know a player, like I'll, I'll be dead honest with you. There was a player that I had in a high school level. We want to, we want a state championship with that was underperforming was undervalued. I think from a teammate's perspective and was undervalued by the coaching staff. And, but he thought he was great and he thought he was good. And he, he thought he was like doing the things he needed to do. And I said, Hey, you know what? We were just at the state champion, uh, the state dinner and everybody was doing voting. Uh, for the uh, for the awards and you know that not one coach voted for you and why didn't they vote for you because they, they said that you were just kind of an invisible player like you really didn't make an impact now it, it, not for nothing but every coach actually is like man that kid's good we're voting for him <laughs> but i'm like i can't get this kid to do anything like i can't right. find any will i'm like and then right before the game like that's the head coach over there that made that real big decision like he's the one advocating that you know this player should have been voted over you and he goes out and scores four goals and three mm -hmm. assists, win the game. We win a state championship. And, right. and, and, you know, and we went now, but because I knew that particular player, that you took the time to know him, kid, but you took yeah, the time was, to do that. that. Was a, but, and that yeah. was a four year relationship. Right. It wasn't right. like I met the kid last weekend. So to your point, I think that you've got to be really careful with that because you just, you, unless you know the player, then it's, it, it, it's a, it's a, it could be a real time bomb. Well, I'll tell you this from my own personal experience, all right, because no player likes to be talked to negatively. But when someone told me I couldn't do something, I tended to do it. <laughs> you know what I'm trying to say? Like when I was yeah. playing or even even today when someone says, like, you can't, you're not going to make that basket. I'm like, oh, that sharpens me up a little bit. You know what I mean? But yeah. but uh, there's a, there's an art to that. OK, and look, yeah. I remember I remember Shaquille O'Neal talking about um now I, I think this is a little little extreme but then again who am i to argue with shaquille o'neal but he told these stories he would make up stories about other players and start to believe them like he would make up false stories about an opposing team's player tell them himself media. yeah like oh. but he would like tell the media like well this guy did this and he comes out like years later like none of it was true <laughs> 
I was like, oh I, just, my gosh. I needed a reason. I needed a reason. Well, was, it's so funny when I work with the, when I work with the little kids, like because I love that. I like I, when you know little kids, like you know eight year olds, and you know like they they have a little grit to them. And I'll be like, and I'll, we'll be standing in line ready for like a little battle drill, and I'm like, what? What did you say, Dennis? Hey, Lee, do you know what Dennis just said? He said, there's no way you're beating him on this drill. And Dennis is like, I didn't say that. I didn't say that. And then they go in there and then it's just like, it's like, it's like you know, crushing each other. I got pick on Dennis like that, Mike. Yeah, he's like, he's like, uh, uh, no, no, I didn't say that. I didn't say that. But it, but it, it's so funny how kids will react. Again, this is, you can't, it's not a, you can't just turn a spigot on all the time. But right. there's little times when you can be, you know, have some fun with these guys, find little ways to motivate them. And then, and then honestly, we all know this, right? There's, there's a, you, you can't just look at an NHL bench. Like you can't l- look at a John Tortorella, right. And then, and then say, well, this is the way you coach. Cause now look what's happening in Philadelphia, right? You got, you got, you got, a, you got Hackstall who was run out of Philadelphia because he didn't know how to be, he didn't know how to coach. And now he's, now he's oh, coaching. A round. Team. He's not, now he's coaching a team <laughs> yeah. that just beat the defending champs. Yeah, so Mike, that's just Philadelphia in general. We have talent <laughs> and they let it go, and then they end up winning someplace else. That's that's been right, our right, lives. Right. Well, maybe yeah, maybe if you want to move your career up, you got to get hired in Philadelphia. But I think it's <laughs> I think, I think, and fired. But I think and it's fired. Just, yeah, I think you got to add that. I, too. I think it's just it's, it's the it's knowing your players, what type of players you have, right? How you can react to them on any given moment. But to to you know what you're saying though is. Like those three different ways of motivation is it is an art. It isn't a this is who I'm gonna be as a coach on the bench right. for all 18 players. You cannot because do it that. just doesn't work. I'm gonna say yeah. what you said again, and I want to reiterate it to the audience, especially the coaches listening. You have to know your players and you have to do work to do that. You are not just gonna know a player because you think you know a player. Take the time to get to know their personalities. This is from eight you up. All right. Mm-hmm. Understand how they tick. I've always, I, 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 Christy, I'm always amazed by this when I work with teams. You know, I'll get to, well, how do you do that? Ask them. <laughs> Ask yeah. them how they're yeah, motivated. Talk true. to them. You know? you know, and I and I just saw this happen last season with my daughters. I was sitting next to moms. And, you know, they come from all different parts of the country. They've had different levels of coaching and different personalities with coaches. And it's funny to listen to the moms because one mom is saying, my daughter just is not playing to her level. And I can tell you why, why? Because the coach isn't yelling at her. She needs to be yelled at. That's how she responds. When she was in high school, she, you know, helped win the state championship because the coach was yelling at her. That's what she needs. And the other mom says, I hope the coach doesn't yell at my daughter because if he yells at my daughter, she's just going to shut Listen, down. They're tools, Christy. <laughs> I, 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 I will give you this great example. Okay. Two of them, actually. So I want to put this little caveat in this too. Okay. There are plenty of head coaches that do not like to do this type of stuff that I'm talking about. And I'm, I'm going to say that's fine. It's fine. If that is not your personality to communicate with mm-hmm. players, fine. Let an assistant coach do it and trust the fine. assistant coach to learn these things for your benefit. I'm working with a coach right now that is not like that. The the approach is very much, uh, I don't want to say fear-based, but it's very much, I'm in charge. I will make the decision. Right. You will do what I say to do. Yeah. That's his style. I respect that. My role is not to be that way. My role is to understand these players and to make sure that I can help learn how to motivate them to yeah. adhere to his style because he is the head coach. There's also an understanding here on the coaching staff. All right. Another thing you want to talk about a tool, Christy, the player you just mentioned is a very important player. As a coach, I want to have a conversation with that player before the year. Coaches, listen up. I'm this is I'm trying to drop some gold for you here. All right. Mike, Mike, <laughs> drop I want the you to gold, All right. If I know there's a player that's motivated by me getting on them, all right, I will have a conversation with that player before the year and say, listen, I'm gonna get on you because you can handle it. And I need to set that example at the practice, but I need you to respond to it the way I know you can. Right. Now a trust has been built. And the, the player understands when the coach is on top of them, there's a reason for it. Mm-hmm. All right. Because they can handle it. Yeah. Not every player can handle that. Correct. You can shut players off by that. And that's not yeah. weakness unless yeah. they can't perform at all. That's a totally different thing. Right. All right. Yeah. But you, these are tools for you as a coach and as a parent. Now I'm thinking about it. Right. To motivate these kids to succeed. Yeah. All right. We're, we're all a little different in this regard. 
All right. But in my mind, a great coaching staff has different personalities as well that can <laughs> hear. And, and it's not about right. trying to move up to the head coach position. Like, like I always said, when I'm an assistant coach, my job is to support the head coach. All right. And I do that by knowing the players and understanding how they tick. I can go to the head coach between periods and say, look, I understand what you're trying to do. You're not going to get this out of that player if you do this. Right. All right. So, yeah. so, and then it might go like, well, you need to sit that player or, or let me do this and we'll get the bet. Sometimes it works. Sometimes yep. it doesn't. There's an art to it. That's gold, Lee. <laughs> Thank you. I, I tried, right, but I, think, I didn't want to but I, but drop I think, out of Mantis, I think, so. I think as you, I think as you, but as you look at the landscape of youth hockey, right, that's why we fail a lot because the, 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 the turnover is too quick. There's too, mm-hmm. it's too fast to have a player come in and you only have them for three months and four months and yeah. you're already trying to get Brutal. rid of them. Like, that's why you, you, you know, obviously it has to change, but that's why when you have college teams and prep teams and mm-hmm. high school teams and pro teams that don't have a lot of turnover, right. you can build Years, those relationships yeah. and build that trust and, and, and invest in your players. It's yeah. so hard for a 10 U squirt coach to invest mm-hmm. in their players without having some tools to help expedite mm-hmm. that. Because if you yeah. think you're just going to do it through the season, by the time you figure the kid out, the kids already signed up for another program. So, yeah. you know, you, you, you need to build these things into your programs quickly, efficiently and, and, and economically, but, mm-hmm. but, but to Lee's point, go out. If you can't do it, find a resource that can do this for you. But that's the number before power play penalty kill ordering jerseys. The number one thing you need to do is figure out who your team is. I'm going to yeah. bring, I'm going to bring and how something. they best respond. I'm right. going to bring bring a very controversial sports topic up in pro sports, Uh-oh. but you've just made a really great point. This is going to get the audience going, right? especially if you're a basketball fan. But I'm going to equate this to hockey too. Michael Jordan, six championships, arguably the greatest basketball player of all time. Nobody talks about 1983 till what the first one was in 92, right? Like this dude lost for years on the Bulls before they became that dynasty. Now you flip to LeBron James, who's been to 10 finals, right? And he's, I think he's won four, three or four of them. He's constantly switching teams. Different sport, but there's something to be said there. Okay. You look at hockey. Now, this is if I'd, I'd have to really rack my brain for this. Very, very rare that a new team, and what I mean new is like a lot of new players completely overhauled the roster, goes all the way and wins. There have been teams that have gone to the final. And, and succeeded in the Cinderella uh, way, but there's not many teams that have won the Stanley Cup that just got put together out of the blue. The, the one that comes in my mind that people might shout to is, well, what about the Avalanche 96? They were a new team. No, that was that was not a new team, all right? right. That was a very, dis, very disgruntled Quebec Nordiques team that had a reason to win. They did happen to get a huge piece of the puzzle in Patrick Waugh going in net, which will win you a Stanley Cup at that time, all right? But my point is, is that, the teams that win tend to have gone through a lot of adversity together, right? One of the reasons the Patriots won so many Super Bowls was because they stuck together a lot of the core there. And by the time they get the Super Bowl, they knew what to do. It was very, very hard to beat that team, right? Yeah, and but I, and that's my, that's my point. It's like, how do we expect a team in our local you know, youth hockey world to have success after success after success. Now you can listen. If you go out and steal the best kids and all put them on the same team regionally, and then you and then you're going to win. I mean, there's the the best team always wins. I mean, the, if, if the bottom line, always, is but yes, you're well, right. If you most, have the best the players part. on the ice right. by far. Right. If the talent is not comparable, you're going to win. How about right. that? But I, but I think right. your point is like you watch the documentaries. Like look at the Islanders dynasty, right? But the the year before they lost to the Rangers, right. and they were the best team in the league. Like so. Like, like looking the, at Oilers did this too. The Oilers, Oilers too. And before they but, started you look at, but you look at what, and then you sit and then, but that's your point is now you look at the pieces and say, if I just take this player out and put mm-hmm. this player in to this environment, Ray Bork goes to college, you know, he's a winner, but he wasn't winning, but he's a winner. So right. he goes to a team and all of a sudden like that's the missing piece. Like right. there was a piece there and it, and not, and it's not always on the ice either. It's, 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 it's the locker room. It's the demeanor. It's the, like the, you hear the guys, the, the pros talk about this all the time. It's the professionalism. Like I get to be, I heard, I just heard um, Montgomery talking about um, uh, Bergeron and he said, what's the one thing you, you might miss if he, if he leaves the NHL, he goes, what I missed was the fact that he came in and I got to see what a real 
professional is like watching what a professional does. And, mm-hmm. and I learned from that. Like I, and I, and then that's going to resonate with players for forever in their right. career. They're going to yeah. look back and say, Oh God, I got to play with that guy who right. taught right. me how to be a professional. And I think what we don't do at the youth level enough is we don't allow players to learn how to be that. Like, cause we, we extract them so fast we give up on them or we exalt them to the highest. Like we say, Oh, you're the, you're the next coming. Well, yeah, but you're, that, that's a disservice to that player. I think in the long term, and we're see, listen, you know, we don't have to get into certain personalities of players right now, but when you look at the players at the professional level that are struggling with a lot of other things going on, a lot of it's because of where they were when they were eight or nine and 10 years old. Right. And they never got out, off that patch, you know, until a, a perch until, until now. Well, and all of a sudden it's like hitting them like a ton of bricks. Mike, I'll tell you this. One, one of the best compliments a, I can get as part of a coaching staff or like that we can get. Uh, and I've gotten this but many times is, man, I really wish we didn't have to split this team up next year. Like yeah. I really wish we could just stay together, you know, yeah. and it's, it's, it's a painful thing to hear, but it's actually also, it's, it's maybe the biggest compliment because they're saying that, you know, our kids grew together this year. I want them to stay together. And the truth is that's not going to happen. And I think to to kind of maybe provide a solution or the the conversation um, as organizations, we don't do enough to promote organizational teamwork or togetherness no. um, between even teams at the same level, right? No. I've said this before. We I, in my organization, there's four Mike teams, right? I understand they can't all be on the ice together. I I get it. I understand all the restrictions, but there's no reason you cannot have events where these kids are together. Great. Another great one is is um, it's tough at eight U, but when you get to the the ten U and the twelve U's, if I'm the coach of the triple A team or whatever, I'm gonna bring those kids to to the lowest teams practice and have them help those kids and teach those kids and learn, right? Especially because they're probably older, right? Let let me show you. I've I've played this level for a year or two. Let me let me help you guys at practice. Let me teach you how to use. We don't do any of that. In fact, it's quite the opposite. It's like, well, he shouldn't be on the triple A team. I should be on the triple A team. You know, it's like, man, we're not teaching any of these skills. And going back to like hockey factories, when you look at Europe, right? You know, you know, I when I was a kid, man, I wanted that so bad. I wanted to look up to somebody older than me on the, t- the higher team. And you know, when it was provided, I I really loved it. Like like I remember when people give me a playbook, I was like, this is great. I got a playbook, right? Organizational leaders, coaches, parents. Encourage yeah, your teams to do to this. Parents have to buy into because they're always right. looking for the next best thing. You know, right. grass is always looking greener on that other team yeah. until you get there. <laughs> yeah, yeah, Christy, another one, like the transfer transfer portal, which, oh, yeah. which is, is in college. I mean, it's, it's rough, right? But, you know, I always encourage people, listen to Gio, uh, Gino Armiano. Ar, I can't say his name. Gino Ariema, that's his name. All right. Oh. He's coach of UConn. And he talks about the transport and his it's profound what he talks about, about athletes moving from team to team to team and how, you know, you're not helping yourselves for the most part, right? There are, right. there are situations where it does make sense, especially sure. if a player doesn't fit, but, right. but this, this grass is greener on the other side approach. Yeah. I, I'm going to say this again, preface it again. There are situations where it is appropriate, All right. If you're suffering with a team, I'm not telling you that you should stay for whatever the type of suffering is, but there is something into in, in learning the adversity of, of fighting through and learning and, and building your organization to be, be better. And I've also said this too. If you have an organization where a lot of kids leave every year, it's not the kids. <laughs> All right. It's not them. It's no. you. <laughs> you got to look at you're that. the problem. Yeah. Hi, it's you. You're the problem. It's you. you. Hello. <laughs> yeah. There's something There's to not. be said for loyalty too. Right. 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 And, and, and the pride of wearing a logo. So look, we only have a few minutes left. I want to make sure we stay on the NHL. I don't want to, I don't want to forget to shout out the Carolina hurricanes and the Dallas stars who also had great, great uh, series. But I think the overarching method and, or me- message, excuse me, of today's episode is look beyond the plays, right? We always, we always start these with, wait, watch the players without the puck, right? Watch all of the players without the hockey right? And see how they're responding to each other, how they're supporting each other, right? You know, a, a goalie breaks a stick and you see the team surround them, right? Or uh, I forgot which game it was, but there was an overtime game uh, and the team lost and man, they all surrounded the goalie. He, he, I remember he let up a weak goal in the overtime. I can't remember what series it was right now, 
Um, it might have been the Carolina. It was the, Island, it was the Islanders Canes. When yes, you had the thank best you. goal, one of the best thank goalies you. in the yes. world gives up like the worst goal. And then you're like, oh, listen, goal. Whoa, 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 whoa. Right. You wouldn't have even been in the picture right. without this guy. Well, like it, it, it was like 57 right. shots to 12. So right. again, they surrounded you know, him, Mike. They surrounded right. Here's the thing. No one would have blamed those players if they just kind of went, yeah. oh, that's bad. And then went to the handshake line. I've seen that before. It's, and I'm yeah. not saying that's wrong. They surrounded Sor- Sor- Sorokin, right? I'm saying, yeah. right? Surrounded. I was touched by it. Like yeah. there's, there's a team that's surrounding this guy. They knew immediately this guy's done everything he can. And he let up a weak one. We don't want him to yeah. feel like he's falling off a cliff. Right. And that's a team, right? They ain't going to win anything this year. And my Philly came out of me. They ain't going to win nothing this year. <laughs> right. But, but. You, Get about you, know, you can learn. Yeah. <laughs> that's <laughs> absolutely that you can learn from these things. All right. And yeah. it's painful. Yeah. And again, you, you have really two choices. You can be like, yeah, the Islanders lost. Yeah, screw the Islanders. And don't get me wrong. There's plenty of that in, in that area. Yeah. Or you can say, wow, look at that. I, I made a video today complimenting the Blue Bruins or acknowledging the Bruins on the regular season because you can't ignore that regular season. It was the best regular season in history. They are not going to yeah. win the cup. This team will most likely not be remembered in terms of that, but the, I, I'd want to know what they did to only right. lose 12 games this year. Right. Tell that to my son, Joey, who's a Bruins fan. And I, I texted him this morning. So now he thinks he's going to win the <laughs> cup. Soon. You know, Too now soon. that your team is out, he's like, I'm not even going to, he's like nasty. He's, I'm he's not even going to watch. Too soon. Right, and then Too Sophia soon. texts him, oh, the Rangers are going to win. So, right. you know, he's sulking. So, um, yeah. but, <laughs> but yeah, there are still a lot of great lessons. So even if your team is out of it, you can still watch with your kids and learn about unity and teamwork and <laughs> yeah. adversity and all of that. Christy, so I, I, I'll tell you this. Sour puss like my son. <laughs> I, I love when I'm coaching or even if I'm watching and a team loses and I love it when I see a team on the lose, I'm sorry, a player on the losing team watching the celebration. And yeah. I've seen this many times. I've seen a player stay on the ice and yeah. watch the other team celebrate. And I know what's happening in that player's head. Oh, and I, I love seeing it. I love seeing oh. it because I know I, I, I'm like that kid. That kid understands why he needs to watch this incredible, painful moment. All right. Well, last quick story before we go. NHL story. I don't remember if I've ever told this, but I'll make it quick. Edmonton Oilers, 1983. They lost to the uh, New York Islanders in the cup final. Uh, this is right before their dynasty would begin, all right? And Wayne Gretzky lost in Nassau Coliseum, and he was in the uh, locker room. I tell this story all the time when I speak. And in Nassau Coliseum at that time, if you lose, you have to walk by the Islanders' locker room to leave. And he said, uh, I didn't want to walk by the Islanders' locker room because I don't want to see them celebrating with the cup. Because he was devastated. They, they had, they, you got to remember, he's never won the cup at this point. W- Wayne Gretzky you may have heard right. of him. And so he, he, he got the gumption. He got up. He walked by the locker room, and he, he, he couldn't help it. He peeked in, and he said when he peeked in, uh, he was shocked by what he saw. The cup was in the room. All the players were in their stalls with ice packs. And he said they were elated, but they couldn't move. They couldn't oh. move. And he said that he could have played four or five more games. He said that. And he said, that was the moment I realized what it would take to win. And and they won four of the next five. And let's be let's be really clear. They probably could have won 10 of the next 11 if, sure. if, if, he, you know, if he really wanted to stay uh, in Edmonton. There's a lot of things there. But my point is his greatest loss – was his greatest teacher on how to mm. win. He understood that they didn't do what enough to win. Yeah. Right. So losing is a teacher. And and my final kind of thought is that if you're a hockey fan that also coaches, I want you to think about how you respond to your team, your NHL team, whom you have zero control over losing and wonder if you're bringing any of that to your team. You can't be a fan you can't coach with your fandom is what I'm trying to say, right? We can all learn parents, coaches, and kids from watching the NHL. That is the bow that I've used to tie this episode together. <laughs> Pets right? can learn too. Pets can learn too. Yeah, if you're watching this video, <laughs> Christy's dog must love Mike and I because he shows up on every, what's his <laughs> name again? I'm sorry. I forgot. Dog Dude. Duke, yeah, it's a great name. I, how did I forget yeah. Duke? Duke is on this. It, by the way, if you're listening to this, you can always watch these episodes on YouTube. You can see all of Mike's <laughs> painful <laughs> memories come back and flood his face and, and all this. He's smiling now. No luck. No luck. <laughs> anyway, he's that's, fun to watch. He you is know, I definitely encourage you to jump on the YouTube channel and watch <laughs> Mike because his expressions are priceless. 
That's great. Well, I, w- I will say this. Uh, we record all of our episodes typically on Monday mornings. I really love starting my week like this every single week with both of you. But uh, that is going to do it for this edition of Our Kids Play Hockey. Hope you learned something today. If you did, uh, send us a message. You can email us at team at ourkidsplayhockey.com. Uh, if you haven't already done so, join our Facebook group, Our Kids Play Hockey. Uh, I have to answer two yes or no questions to get in. That grows by the day. And that's where we ask for topic suggestions. Christy is often asking us to put things in there for her um, uh, editorials that she does. So make sure you join that group. Uh, But above all, thank you for listening. Make sure you leave us those five-star reviews and share this episode with your kids, your parents, your coaches, even though it's the off-season. For Christy Cash, Anna Burns, and Mike Benelli, I'm Lee Elias. We'll see you on the next edition of Our Kids Play Hockey. Have a great day, everybody. (laughs) Duke's waving goodbye. Bye. We hope you enjoyed this edition of Our Kids Play Hockey. Make sure to like and subscribe right now if you found value wherever you're listening, whether it's a podcast network, a social media network, or our website, ourkidsplayhockey.com. Also, make sure to check out our children's book, When Hockey Stops, at whenhockeystops.com. It's a book that helps children deal with adversity in the game and in life. We're very proud of it. But thanks so much for listening to this edition of Our Kids Play Hockey, and we'll see you on the next episode.